I think when I say all of you are hungry, I think my learned friend had had his lunch and come here. He missed the whole point. I'm trying to say that this insulin is closer physiologically to what our body does. And therefore, all the markets have to improve. The data non-critical settings can easily be extrapolated to the intensive care settings. Not all patients of intensive care have an IV insulin. A lot of them are on subcut insulin. And if you use subcut insulin, it is more physiological to use analog insulin. Again, a lot of patients are on TPM, rise tube feeding, stroke patients. For them, the longer acting analogs are better because they have a peak less profile, therefore cause less hypoglycemia. And one of the slides that I had said that in the US, the prescriptions for the analog have more than tripled, whereas the prescriptions for the human insulin have gone down tremendously. Why is it then? Is it that the Americans are fools? And we are following their guidelines, so we are more full. We are, we are, uh, full, uh, we are, we are even more um, full than they are. Is that the case? I leave the decision in your capable hands. Thank you. Well, I think uh... again, I'm amused by Dr. Dangoni's replacement. He's quoting the American data. I think his half foot is still in the US right at the moment. <laughs> I will just say simply one simple thing, and that is very simple. We have to be realistic. This is a debate, and frankly speaking, if you ask me, this is not a good enough topic for a debate, particularly where we do not have any good evidence-based data. If you have data, then obviously you can debate upon it. If you don't have data, you cannot depend upon it. All the data that Dr. Ganguly showed was basically about, in general, use of analog insulin. There is no second thought about it. Analogs are superior, there's no second thought about it. But definitely you must understand something. When you're dealing with a vulnerable patient in a critical care setting, then all the parameters and all your options, they change quite a lot. I'm not sure how many patients in critical care units would really be using subcutaneous insulin to that extent. If they're really well managed with subcutaneous insulin, they should not be in a critical care unit. They should be in a general war. And yes, certainly in a general war, the point that he has mentioned is well taken. That definitely in a patient who is having a risk of hypoglycemia, where we have got some excellently trained nurses who always ask patients to take insulin and to take the food just after having the insulin. In this sort of a scenario, obviously analog insulin is definitely better. But when it is in a critical care setting, when things are more monitored, I do not feel there is enough data to suggest Till date, that IV insulin, IV conventional, um, conventional insulins are inferior to analog insulin. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Guru. That's a very good discussion. Actually, in the our practical setup, we use conventional insulins in the ICC setting because they present a critical need and they are require the intravenous form, so it is better to go for the intravenous form with the conventional insulin. We know very well that the analogs are better, but this is in the general patients, not the critical patients who are in the ICC. I think Dr. Ganguly is Thank you. You can remember both of Dr. Ganguly and Dr. Majumda, who are talking so much percent in this city, but they are talking about the care from time to now, now we request our moderators to hand over their intros to our speakers. Dr. Kulan Ranguli. And Dr. Shujal Mojinda. Dr. C. Bhattacharya and Dr. Shujubhato Chattopadha. Please come up on the screen. Now we request uh, Dr. S. S. Rathor, CMD Eastern Railway, to hand over the to the moderators of this session.
Genau, danke sehr.